Yeah, a little bit of. Hmm. Hey, good day. How you doing? <laughs> I don't know how nervous you're feeling, but I know I'm feeling very nervous. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> I do believe we have um, grown as a group, which is great. And um, there are several new faces that I can't recognize, but hopefully over the next two weeks, I'll get to know you a little bit more, which will be great. Hello. Sounds like the black cockatoo up in uh, Northern Queensland. Ah. <laughs> We've got, um, we've got two weeks of lots and lots of ATM. Yeah, oh good, that's a good response. <laughs> um, as you know, uh, in this first year of training, that's what it's really about, how to get right in there and experience yourself. And of course, um, Jenny's here to throw the orange cube at you. No, Jenny's here to assist and, uh, and help you, help me, help us. That'd be great. Um, and I would really invite you at any time, if you do have a question, and if you do want to make a comment about something, or you need a little bit of direction in terms of, I want to do it, but I can't quite get there, please consult me and Jenny. I mean, that's, that's what we're here for. Um, yeah, so that's, a, that's an invitation. What else? Um, you probably get oriented as we go. Is there something of particular significance? I, th I think the important thing, I, I will talk to you about general logistical stuff a bit later, a bit later. rather than burden you with it all now, but in terms of, of our safety, there are a couple of issues. The mats on the wooden floor all have an anti-skid thing underneath them. So if you feel that you need to move one of those mats for any reason, please leave the, the non-skid mat there for whoever comes to take that place. The other thing is when we get up after a lesson and walk around as we normally do, our attention is often still internal. So would you please make sure that your bags, your shoes, your stuff is up the back and out of the way and that cups and water bottles and in particular spectacles mm. are not where someone might inadvertently tread on them or, or trip over them. Um, if, you, if you really need to have your water right beside you, we do kind of change activities at least every hour. <laughs> yes. um, so you might find that you know they could be at the back or at least beside the pillar so that there's a relatively clear space for, for people to be able to to walk around in that internal sensing mode which of course we do want to then encourage to come back out into the world but gradually not violently and suddenly hmm. yeah that's actually very good advice so, um, and it's very good advice because if you're trying to, um, if we're trying to create an environment here where you can, can be internal and not have to be vigilant about where you're walking for the moment, then everything that Jenny said applies. And um, don't worry, uh, when we want you to be vigilant about the environment, we'll construct it and we'll give you the opportunity to do that. But at the moment, keep it easy. So you're, yeah. you're not in high demand to go, oh, am I going to step on something? But you can just be with yourself. So that's actually really good yeah. advice. And of course, you don't really want a cup of tea over your mat either. So um, when you, when I know, notice some of you have got drinks at the moment. And occasionally we will encourage you to grab a drink and come back for a discussion or to watch a video or something. Please remember when you're finished, put it somewhere safe so that you know where to find it. and. Hmm. It's all safe. Well, the safest place is in here. Well, not for the cup. <laughs> no, but cup. for the tea. For the tea. <laughs> tea in, cup. Cup away. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So I just realized I didn't, um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't even say my name. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce <laughs> our trainer for this session. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, in a moment or two, I'll get you to get together with each other in uh, the color of your cord here. I think it's called the lanyard, yes? Yep. The lanyard cord. Uh, so that you can just um, check in with each other and maybe get to meet a, a, a brand new person. But before we do that, uh, let me give you a, a, an idea of how we'll be traveling through this segment. In this segment, we're doing a series of lessons that kind of really begins to link uh, the, the body from pelvis through to head kind of direction. And we'll start with a series of lessons uh, often known as pelvic clock uh, and then go into a series of another lessons that involves uh, holding your foot and moving it around all over the place, usually called hooking the big toe. Uh, after that, there's a few little lessons that really are about the arms and the chest. So you can see there's kind of a little progression going on up here and will eventually culminate in you know, how do we begin to balance our head and organize the movements of our head and our neck and relate that to everything else that we've done before. So that's kind of like the sweep of things throughout the, throughout the two weeks. In terms of movement, that's it. In terms of the undercurrent, the sub-theme going through the whole thing, it'll be the topic of how do we pay attention? What is it that we do to pay attention? How do we attend? How do we organize ourselves to attend? And that's the major theme because without attention, um, you can't direct and pick up experience. Okay. So that's the thing. You'll see up here on the board something that I've written. It says, I actually give the same lesson all the time, except in a different way. Now they're not my words. Uh, they're the quoted words of Moshe Feldenkrais and there's a backstory behind it. Uh, for those of you who have a little bit of background in Feldenkrais, you'll know that one of um, Feldenkrais's first apprentices, if you like, the very first person that ever worked with him was a lady by the name of Mia Siegel, who he formed a very close friendship with. But in the early days, when she started to first work with him, uh, he one day drove up and picked her up in the car. And she got in the car with him, and they're driving, he's driving her to do one of his awareness through movement classes. And she's looking across and she's looking, where are his notes? Where's all the stuff? Are you prepared? And because he's just yabbering, yabbering and laughing and telling jokes and her way of preparing is to prepare everything with great number of notes. And she asks him, well, where is everything? Oh, shouldn't you be focusing? Shouldn't you be attending? Shouldn't you be ready to teach and know what you're teaching? And that's when he turns to her, he says, actually, I actually give the same lesson all the time. Now, those of you who have delved even further know that there is something like a repertoire of a thousand recorded lessons, either audio, transcribed, there's a lot. Um, so you've got a, a tremendous variety. So what is he talking about? What is he talking about when he says, I teach the same thing all the time, but in a different way? What is he referring to? And that's something that in over these next two weeks, if we can begin to intimately know what he's talking about, that will give you a ground to stand on in every awareness room. It doesn't matter what movement you're teaching, you know that that's the fundamental that you're teaching. For those of you who play musical instrument, you know if you hit a chord, other strings reverberate, yeah? They start to pick up. 
So you're always playing the fundamental chord and everything else is playing around it. So that's the question that we want to get to in this segment. So could you please get together in your lanyard colored groups? And uh, is anybody here in um, colorblind? Now just, it's worthwhile asking, because if you're colorblind, then you won't have a clue.